ready to get down to business? Join seasoned entrepreneur, community leader, and Army veteran Scott Shalom Klein, who will take you behind the scenes with those who work in America's small business scene and speak with leaders making an impact, creating jobs, and telling their story in entrepreneurship. So let's get down to business. On AM560, The Answer, here's your host, Shalom Klein. And indeed, we're all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship and business. We talk a lot about business here. You're on with Get Down to Business. I'm your host, Shalom Klein. Remember, you can always download podcasts on my website at sykline.com. While you're there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shalom Klein. It's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss. So let's jump right in. I'm super excited to be joined by a man who is going to talk to us about uh, who does what by how much, a practical guide to customer-centric OKRs. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And that is Josh Seiden. Um, Again, we know that people are working hard, but often on the wrong stuff. And this happens widely because teams are told what to build from leadership, causing them to lose track of what their customers want. And it's important to keep in mind that organizations exist to provide some kind of value to people, yet too often they don't have a clear understanding of who these people are or what they need. What's needed, our guest argues, is a system that first and foremost considers customer behavior. So again, he has quite literally written the book on the objectives and key results known as OKR Framework. Josh, thanks for joining us. Shalom. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure. So let's get down and dirty over here. Why is it that so many people end up working on the wrong stuff? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, most businesses, or I will say, I believe all businesses succeed when their customers succeed. But a lot of times in businesses, we lose track of um, what customers are trying to do. What does success look like for the customer? And so the title of the book, Who Does What by How Much, is really asking that question. Who's the customer? What are they trying to do? And how can we measure that they're doing that in a, a way that's better, more successful, easier, more valuable. Um, and that's what the whole book is about. How do we understand our customer? How do we set goals around their success that will ultimately lead to the success of our business? And that's important. And I, this is relevant to businesses of all different industries and of all different sizes. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But how can a focus around customers' needs enable clear guidance on what to work on? Well, you know, a lot of times uh, we have the sort of um, leaders falling into a kind of an old school way of of keeping the organization aligned. Leaders will say, you all do this and that team, you do that. and, And you guys over here, you do this. And you folks over there, you do this. It's very prescriptive. And it doesn't take advantage of all of the knowledge in the organization. And so OKRs, objectives and key results, are a way that leaders can frame the organizational goals as problems to solve. They say, here's what we're trying to do. Now, you folks, you're smart. Figure out how to do that. And it it gives teams a problem to align around um, as opposed to kind of um, just directions fired off from the top of the organization. Absolutely. And how is it true that everyone has a customer? We know that there's a lot of professionals that uh, maybe uh, that doesn't apply to. Tell tell us a little bit about your philosophy on that topic. Right. So uh, we almost called the book "Everyone Has a Customer." <laughs> um, you know, and I think it's a little bit counterintuitive if you think about customer as exclusively the end customer, the person who walks up to the counter and puts a five on the counter. Or you know the person who signs a contract. There are certainly external customers, but if you think about um, large organizations or even even small and mid-sized organizations, we all are in business to serve other people. Sometimes those customers are people inside our organization, right? And so those people, we can treat those people as customers. So, for example, if I work in human resources, right? Well, I may not interact directly with an end customer, but my customers are the managers who are trying to hire. My customers are the employees in the organization who are trying to understand their benefits. Um, and so, by reframing this notion of customer as from from simply like the people who 
plop the money down on the counter to the people we serve in our jobs. Um, that reframing lets us kind of take a customer centric point of view to everyone's job. Absolutely. Again, I'm chatting with Josh Seiden, who is the author of Who Does What by How Much? A Practical Guide to Customer Centric OKR. So let's dive into that OKR acronym. I know that, uh, again, you are very passionate about uh, this process and this approach. So how do teams work through the OKR creation process? Yeah. So OKRs uh, stand for Objectives, O, and Key Results. And so objective is sort of the big goal. Um, and key results are the measures. How do we know we are making progress towards our goal? How do we know we're achieving our goal? Um, it's a popular management framework. It got started in the technology industry, um, but we believe that it applies really to any organization of any size um, and in any sector. Um, there have been a lot of good books about it. Um, the the investor John Doerr wrote a, uh, I think, a really terrific book about it. There are a number of specialist books about it. Um, our book says, look, OKRs are great when they focus our organization on strategy and when they focus our organization on customers. And so um, the first thing that we do in the OKR process is we get aligned around strategy. What is the strategic goal of the organization? What are the choices that we're making as an organization? And, and this can be a, a 10 person company or it can be you know a hundred thousand person company. What are the strategies that we're employing? And, and then we uh, use a process of, of uh, sort of methodically translating that strategy into smaller and smaller pieces that uh, individuals and teams can work on. Um, so OKRs sort of exist at the high level in the organization. We've read a set of OKRs for the whole organization. And then each team probably has uh, you know, an OKR or two that they're working against. Mm -hmm. So sticking on that theme, what implications do OKRs have for leadership, management, and culture? So the first thing that is that OKRs can be really, really different when we when we different from sort of business as usual, I should say. Business as usual is sort of the leader says, "You all do this and come back to me and tell me when it's done." And uh, OKRs sort of reframe that as you all solve this problem and come back to me on a regular basis and report your progress. For so, uh, in your pursuit of so, uh, solving that problem, um, and that maybe that sounds subtle, but it's actually a huge change. It's actually a huge change in the way the culture of most companies operate. Most companies are used to the boss says do it, and we all say yes. Um, and this is the boss says solve a problem, and this means we need to start an investigation, and so people become. Uh, kind of explorers, discoverers, uh, and uh, it really unlocks the creativity and smarts of the organization. Absolutely. Again, uh, we've been chatting with Josh, Josh Seiden and uh, really enjoyed our conversation about his new book, uh, co-authored uh, with Jeff Gothelf, uh, and it's called Who Does What by How Much? Practical Guide to Customer-Centric OKR. I know it just came out a few months ago. It's already making waves. So, Josh, who needs to pick up a copy of this book and how can they do how can they find it? Sure. So we think this book is for leaders at every level inside organizations of any size uh, and in any sector. Uh, you can learn more about the book by going to okr-book.com. Uh, okr-book.com. Um, and uh, we'd love it if you check it out and uh, let us know what you think. It's called Who Does What by How Much. And again, I hesitate to call it a book because it really is a practical guide to customer-centric OKRs. OKRs, again, standing for objectives and key results because we all want to know, indeed, who does what and by how much. Thank you, Josh Seiden, for joining us on the program. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Shalom. Absolutely. We'll link in our show notes to both uh, Josh's book as well as that of all of our other guests. And speaking of other guests, we've got a great lineup still 
in store for you today on Get Down to Business. So you don't want to touch that dial. All of our shows can be found on my website at sycline.com, or of course, on your favorite podcast app. Just be sure to check out Get Down to Business. But do me a favor, my friends, subscribe, rate, review, and share makes it even easier for others to find this program. And be sure to check out our sponsor, Tom Mirabali. He's an independent agent for all of your health insurance needs. You can reach him 630-863-3477, 630-863-3477, or his website, healthplanchicago.com. Again, all of our shows for the past 11 plus years, believe it or not, are all archived on my website at sycline.com. And shoot me a line. Would love to hear from our listeners. Would love to hear what you think of the show. And if there's particular topics that you know would benefit you in your professional life. Again, a quick break here and get down to business. We'll be right back. 